Hello guys and welcome back to another satisfactory guide and today we're going to be looking at machines and how to load them. And I've decided to do this because it was a question that was asked by a few people during our live streams. Now we are going to cover the basics first going up from constructors all the way through to uh, the blenders. They should give you all the things that you kind of need. Uh, or suggestions, ideas that I think you'll find useful. And it's going to cover both basic stuff and stuff that more advanced people will find interesting as well. So starting off, we're going to be looking at constructors. But before we talk about various ways in which you can do this, the first thing that I wanted to show off was load balance versus splitting. Um, there's a lot of contention about this. I've talked about it a lot, but basically you don't need to worry too much about the efficiency of the manifold design, which is the one on the left versus the perfect split on the right. The reason is that once the manifold fully blocks up, uh, it will run down and everything will start to run efficiently. That being said, when you're using manifolds on larger machinery, you might want to be careful about uh, which way you're loading it so that you're making sure that everything comes through the same direction Otherwise, it's going to vastly increase the amount of time that it takes to warm up the system If you don't load all of the resources directly into the machine to start off with and just to break it down a manifold starts from the beginning and runs a line along all of the machines loading into each one Now they won't split evenly until it's fully uh, filled up because you'll see that the, the first machine in the order is prioritized and then the second, third and so on. One perk with the manifolds versus load balancing is that they're relatively compact and they're very easy to set up. As you can see here, we can just run a manifold on both sides without any issues of space. Load balancing or perfect splitting is just when you take the items that are on the belt and perfectly split them into the machines. Now with that said, we can talk about how you may want to load them in your factory. Now the first way in which I like to load my constructors is from feeding from below. Generally speaking, I do use a manifold, but you can see it's nice and compact and leaves the top side of the factory clean for you to use. Here you can see that I've used the conveyor floor holes, but you can also use the same system without them such as over here. Now what I've done is run the manifold underneath the walkway. In fact, I can remove these two to show you. Oh, I didn't actually connect these, whoops. Uh, <laughs> but I then run the walkway across. And you can do the same on the other side, bring the items down, or alternatively, you can bring the items up to a manifold above. Either way, it keeps the floor open and so that you can walk around your factory. Before we move on, you might have seen me in my Let's Play loading up my constructors like this. Looking at this, there are three main components. First of all, we have the beams that we are using along the bottom, then we have the barriers and also the frames. We're going to have to place down the barriers first, then the beams on the bottom, and ideally you want to do the pillars first because it's just a little bit finicky. So here we have our little tester section. We've got our constructor and also our elevator. Now it doesn't really matter where this is. This can be further back should we wish. What we're going to do is grab our pillar frame and from here you can either go up this close but it's going to be a little bit difficult trying to get the right position um, or you can go back the equivalent of two whole frames and then from here we're going to find the right position. So you want this to be in line with the top and bottom of this elevator um, output. And from here, we're going to zoop it across uh, along there. So at this point, we have our little frame, which is going to go around our conveyor, which you can place relatively easily. And then next, all we need to do is place the barriers like so. And if you want them to go all the way in, you can zoop this as well. And same with the other side as well. And then finally, we're going to grab our beam and we're just going to run this across. 
I'm going to run it across the back. And finally, all the way back around on the other side. And if you really want to add a little bit more detail, you can go across the top as well. And that works quite nicely. One thing that I really like to do is to have glass walls between my manufacturing plants and the actual walkways. As you can see here, it keeps everything nice and clear and works really well for larger manufacturing lines. What we have done is have the manifold above and the same with the merging manifold after. And the items simply go down and then back up into the manifold line. Next we have the assemblers and this brings our first real issue when it comes to manifolds is that you have to lift everything up. It's the same with low balancing at this point because you need to keep it. Well, unless you want to clip through, uh, you want to keep it all clear. Uh, so for this, you're going to have to layer two levels. Now you can either do it like this. This style keeps it pretty low to the ground, which means that it's a little bit messy along where you're walking. Alternatively, what you can do is lift this up like this, which keeps the floor again nice and clean. As you can see, this is the same issue that you'll have with load balancing. You have to lift everything up. But here we have my favorite way uh, currently of loading assemblers. You can see it's nice and clean. We bring the resources back down from once they've been produced. And if we go under, you can see that we have the manifold there like so. Just in general, it is very useful to use logistic floors because it keeps everything clean on the main factory and then has everything running beneath. You're kind of tucking away the stuff that you don't necessarily want seeing. But again, you can take this up above a bit like I did previously with the manifold. But again, if you want to have use a manifold above the assembly line, you can keep it quite compact by having it into the hitbox of the assemblers, as you can see here. This is quite a nice way to take the process that we've just seen, but bring it above onto a visible manifold. And now we have the manufacturers. You can of course load balance these and as you can see we've kind of done a stepped system with the splitters going up and then splitting off like you would the constructors from before. The manifold system for the manufacturers is similar in that it's a stepped system but again with a manifold system you can duplicate these so you can mirror these on each side keeping it relatively compact if you want to load these manufacturers from below you can do again i'm using the glass system so that you can see everything it looks really good in my opinion especially when you look at my other build heavy modular framed factory i actually did a time lapse of it and you can check it out i'll put a link to the in the top right hand corner but you can see how we've used the same system in order to bring resources up and it just looks great we then have our refineries now the refineries i tend to do in just one or two ways with these i always use the manifold system and i auto above generally speaking and have the solid resource fed from below now i didn't always use the liquids being fed from above the reason for that is it looks incredibly clean when they're fed from below however there is a problem with liquids at the moment so if you are using this you have to be very careful if you're dependent on it running 100 percent efficiently you'll have to make sure if you're feeding the liquids from below that you have a buffer prior uh, to these manifolds to give you that head lift to make sure that everything rises up to the right height. Otherwise, you're going to have some issues, which we've talked about recently in a fluid guide, which I'll put a link to the top right hand corner now so that you can check that out just to make sure that you're not going to come across any issues. Now, when it comes to refineries that are being used on their own, they're not going on to another construction manufacturer anytime soon. I like to make sure that we have plenty of walkways. This again looks very uh, open to me and it also means that we can have all the resources below, whether that's a logistics floor or just logistics below the walkways. However, when it comes to pure steel um, alternate recipe, I mean, we're using pure iron into compact steel. Um, you can see how we've got the refineries and then they lead straight into the foundries. However, the coal is fed up from below and runs straight along the side 
into the foundries, making it a really compact setup. And then finally, we have the blenders. The easiest way to do this for me is just the manifold with the liquids going under. And the great thing about them having two inputs is that you can run one on the outside and one on the inside so that they're not actually having to cross one another. Of course though if you don't like having your manifolds above you can run them below but another option to just make it a little bit cleaner depending on how many resources you have along your manifold you can mix them and run them along a mixed belt or a sushi belt uh, into all of the blenders using smart splitters. Now, if you are going to do this technique, you need to make sure that it is running efficiently because if you have too many of one item, it's eventually going to saturate the manifold and they won't be able to get the other resources in in order to produce those items. So if you are going to use a sushi belt, make sure that you're load balancing and making sure you're getting the exact amount of uh, resources you need and always have an overflow as well. Now you may be wondering after what I've just said about the pipes for the refineries, why are we uh, underfeeding? Of course you can do it from above, but it just looks so much cleaner. Um, it's something that I really like with this build specifically, but what you may have noticed is that at the start of this uh, production line that we do have those buffers. So the theory is that the liquids would come into these buffers and then they would have that head lift pushing the liquids back up to the blenders along the manifold line. But there we are guys, a little guide on ways in which you can, should you wish, load your manufacturing lines. Now, if you do have your own way that you particularly like to use, then make sure to let me know in the comment section below. If you did find the video helpful, please do drop a thumbs up. And obviously, if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solo Eclipse patrons, The Calamity, Cerebral Tag and James Irwin and Jerry too, as well as our Lunars, Dixie Chris, Lord of July and Ben, as well as our Blood Moon, Papa Snoozy. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.